DC Nation, what is up? Back to another video, and today I'll be covering all the new DC comics that came out for this week of September 28th. Now, this week we got the first issue of Deathstroke, Inc. We also got Robin, number six, and then more Fear State. It was actually a pretty good week. Not a huge week, but some memorable comics. So, without further ado, let's get into it. Starting it out, we're going to begin with Deathstroke Inc. or Deathstroke Incorporated number one. This issue is written by Joshua Williamson, the same writer on Robin and the same writer that did that amazing 100 issue flash run. Now, so far, this is a good start. I like this issue. We see Deathstroke Slay Wilson teaming up with Black Canary, and they're both under this trust organization, and this whole issue, they're going after this beehive queen, all right? Now, there's a lot of action. We see Deathstroke using some of Batman's tech, and then him using his own set. We see this, like, one cool splash image where Deathstroke is just, like, shooting at everything, and it's super dope. I'll say one thing. The art by Howard Porter, it starts out a little rough in like the first few pages because how many panels there are, but once Howard Porter lets loose, like he's having less panels and just some awesome images, the artwork becomes really cool. Like the artwork in this issue is really good, I like it. Like it goes beyond what I expect from Howard Porter. Like yeah, he's had some good work in the past, he's always evolving, but there's a couple shots in this issue that I'm just like, that's dope, especially for Deathstroke. Now, as the issue continues, we find out that Slade is actually dying. Because Black and Mary asks him, she's like, all right, we just took down the new Hive Queen. I don't think you would be doing this. Like, I wouldn't expect Deathstroke to be saving all these people, taking down a villain. Like, you're not a hero. And Slade tells her that he's dying. Now, it's a big revelation, and we see Slade's mindset. He's trying out this whole hero thing because he wants to see if it sticks. Because he's tried being a villain in the past, he's tried being anti-hero, now it's time for him to be a flat-out hero. And if it sticks, great, he dies as a hero. If it doesn't, he goes back as a villain and dies as a villain. Now this new status quo, I like, it's nothing groundbreaking, but it's still interesting and a good way to start Slade for the series. Now the issue ends and we see that the trust organization since they have Black Canary and Slay now, they're going to try to get other villains like Captain Cold and a couple others that are on this one final panel. Overall, this issue, it's solid. It sets up the framework for this entire series. And the final page, we see what's coming. We see Deathstroke maybe going against Robin. We may see like a crossover event. And usually, I'm not excited for those. But in this case, this series and the Robin series, both written by Joshua Williamson, are great so far. And a crossover, I'd be down for it. So yeah, guys, overall, a great issue. If you're a fan of Deathstroke and you like Joshua Williamson's writing, then definitely pick this up. Next up, we got Robin, number six. So far, this series has been amazing, and this issue is no different. The Lazarus Tournament officially begins in this issue. It's action packs. Like, guys, Gleb Melnikov, his artwork is phenomenal. The action sequences in this book are really cool, and it kept me on the edge of my seat when I was reading it. Seeing Damien just kill this, there's like one part where he kills this guy and puts a sword right through his like chest, and I'm like, that is cool. It's a great way to start the comic. As the comic goes on, it's not just action. Like, obviously, the action is the best part. I really enjoyed that. But we also get Damien interacting with Flatline, finding more about her. We get some quiet moments between them. We also get Damien talking to Connor Hawk again, Ravager. We get some setup with Respawn. A lot of good stuff. Joshua Williamson really knows how to pace the series well. And how the issue ends with Respawn about to kill Damien and Damien finally finding the secrets of the book that Mother Soul was holding, it gets me intrigued to see what happens next. Like, I'm really invested in the series and it hasn't let me down yet. So yeah, guys, if you've been enjoying this Robin series, definitely pick this up. There's not like a lot of plot progression. It's just more an action-focused issue, but still one of the best issues in this series thus far. So yeah, 
go pick this up at your local comic shop. And next on our list, we get to some fear states. We're going to be talking about Detective Comics number 1043, Fear State Part 1. At least it's a tie-in for this series. Written by Mariko Tamaki, art by Dan Mora, and you already know the artwork by Dan Mora is phenomenal. It's amazing, guys. There's this one double page spread in this issue where Batman like jumps this guy and slams his head to the ground, and it gave me chills. I was reading this, I was like, okay, pretty okay issue so far. Oh, that is dope. Like, it got me invested immediately when I saw that double page spread. And from there, we get a lot of good action, a good pace. A lot of just good back and forth between Nakano and Batman. Basically, this issue, we see Nakano dealing with the fear state. He's still with Gotham, just going into chaos. And Simon says, it's like, oh, you have to still invest in the magistrates. And Nakano tells him, I don't know about that. Like, everyone around me is telling me this isn't a good idea. And then Nakano gets hunted down by these random villains. They're not remarkable, but they're still good to be beat up. And we see Nakano get in a bad situation, and Batman comes to save them. And we know Nakano, he's against vigilantes. His whole protocol is going against Batman, so to see this dynamic is very interesting. And by the end of the issue, we see Nakano discover, like, these eggs or offspring of Vial. And I'm a little skeptical about this, because Vile has been very hit or miss as a character, and just anything related to him. At times, he's awesome, where other times, I just don't care. And to have part of him inserted into this Fear State storyline, we'll see. It may be cool, it may suck. But I will say, this opening chapter for this Fear State science storyline was great. It's really the artwork that makes it, like, it's a make or break it situation. If there was not Dan Moro's artwork, and you had some me ochre art, uh, this issue have probably not worked. It would probably been like still a okay issue because Mariko Tsumaki's writing is actually pretty solid in this issue. She makes good dialogue, a good pace, and I like it. But it's really Dan Moro's artwork that lets me get invested in this. Like that dope page spread, like I said earlier, got me hyped. So yeah, if you've been liking Detective Comics, if you like Dan Moro's artwork, if you want more Fear State, then check out this issue. Speaking of Fear State, let's get into Harley Quinn, number seven, and this issue, it's all right. Like this whole series so far hasn't been great. The artwork by Riley Rosmo, I've never been a big fan of his artwork. It's always very cartoony and weird, and it fits Harley Quinn, but I still don't really invest in it. Like, I'm not as interested. But the story itself isn't that bad. Like, Harley is in character. She's great. And to see Hugo Strange in, like, a Batman costume is always awesome. Like, that whole sequence in this issue where he's just doing things as Batman, I liked it. And then the ending where Harley Quinn interacts with a gardener, good. Like, that's good stuff. It fits into Fear State. But as an issue as a whole, it's fine. Like, if you have other issues that you're more interested in, and you want to skip this one, mm, it's kind of skippable. Like, this whole series is kind of skippable, unless you're really a die-hard Harley Quinn fan. So yeah, that's my thoughts on it. But guys, getting out of Fear State, let's get into one of my favorite comics of the week, Batman Superman number 22. And this is actually the final issue of the series. Written by Gene Luen Yang, Arts by Paul Peltier, and this issue is the masterpiece. I really enjoyed it. It's just such a fun issue. We see Calendar Man, he's in Arkham Asylum on A Day. He almost dies by the Joker gas, and then Mr. Miss Biglick saves him. And they team up. We see these two villains, one from the fifth dimension and one that's just a Batman villain, team me up, and it's wacky, it's awesome, and then obviously we got Batman and Superman team me up to fight them, we get some cool action sequences, the artwork by Paul Peltier fits the tone perfectly, and there's certain sequences when Mr. Mispiglick and a Calendar Man are talking, and I'm just invested. For some reason, I was just so invested in this couple scenes than other comics. Which normally I don't get that for Mr. Miss Biglick and Calendar Man, but Jean Lu and Yang made it happen. 
So yeah, great issue. If you've been enjoying this series, definitely pick up this issue. It sucks that this is the final issue because Gene Luen Yang has been killing it. Like ever since he jumped on, it's been an amazing series that I've been highly enjoying. And yeah, check it out guys, especially if you're a fan of Mr. Mispiglick. Like, he's great in this issue. Now, going to our next comic of the week, we got Superman 78, number two. And guys, you already know, I really liked issue number one. It felt like a flashback to the Richard Donner era and seeing Christopher Reeve's Superman back in action and having Brainiac involved, it was cool. Now, this issue continues that. I wouldn't say this issue is as strong as the first one. It isn't, but still a really fun issue. We see Lex Luthor, he gets involved, and Superman tries to trust him, and then Brainiac attacks. We get a lot of great action sequences, and now the issue ends with Superman surrendering himself, and everyone in Metropolis are like, no, we need him as our hero. Like, what? Brainiac is not going to save us. And Brainiac, I like it, he comes to Earth, and he's telling everyone, I'm here to save you from the Kryptonian. And it fits the tone of this universe, the Richard Donner universe. So yeah, I'm liking Brainiac in this. Lex, he's great. And just the tone of this story is awesome. So yeah, guys, if you enjoyed issue number one, I feel like you'll enjoy this issue, so check it out. Now, going to our next comic of the week, we got Action Comics number 1035, written by Philip Katie Johnson. This issue is actually great. Like guys, I have not been really invested in action comics in the past few years. It's been kind of mediocre storytelling, but Philip K. Johnson has got me back into it. Like this storyline with War World, Mongol, Superman leaving his family, leading the Justice League, and just him saying goodbye is great. Like I really enjoyed it. And the artwork by Daniel Sanfrey really fits the tone and makes the whole issue epic and those certain emotional scenes between Superman saying bye to Lois, Superman saying bye to Jonathan Kent. Guys, that scene when he's saying bye to his son, it, it hit me like such a good scene, good dialogue and my favorite scene in the book. Now we also get some action too and by the end of the issue everything comes together and now Superman's going off on this adventure with the authority. Now, I haven't been a big fan of the Superman and the Authority comic out right now. It's like a four-issue May series written by Grant Morrison. I haven't. I felt kind of bored when I'm reading it. But this here, this storyline, him going with the Authority to fight off Mongol, right now, I'm interested. I'm excited to see where it goes and to see what Philip K. Johnson has in store. So yeah, guys, if you like Superman, if you like epic storylines, emotional storylines, and you like good artwork, then check out this issue. Now, going to our next comic of the week, we got Justice League number 68. For the main story written by Brian Michael Bendis, in my opinion, it sucks. Like, I have not been enjoying Bendis' run, and this issue is no different. We see in the beginning, basically, the Justice League are against the United Order. We have this little feud, and it ends very quickly. And then we just see the fallout of it all. Like, we see Naomi get back to her parents, some Dr. Fates, and Constantine appearances. We also see, like, Superman go to help Green Arrow, because Green Arrow, like, leaves to deal some checkmate stuff. See how Bendis just inserts, like, his other storylines and other comics right now into the Just League title? It just feels like this Just League title is just Bendis being like, okay, we have the Just League here, but hey, here's Naomi, here's Checkmates, here's Green Arrow. Like, it, I I'm doing books on those characters. It you want to check them out after you read this issue. That's all it feels like. And the checkmate stuff in this issue sucks. And we also have like Leo, you know, Lois Lane's brother, fighting off against some death strokes. And I thought it'd be like last issue, that was actually kind of interesting. Here, it kind of falls flat because Superman shows up, the death strokes are watching, and they're like, oh, I don't think we can take him down. It's Superman. I'm like, wait, so what's the point of these death strokes? Like, they're not really menacing at all. And if Leo, Lois Lane's brother can survive them, then what's the point? Now the action is cool, and the artwork throughout this issue is kind of hit or miss at times, and the action sequences and choir moments, it's good, 
But in other moments, it, it looks very mediocre and not good. So yeah, guys, main story, I, I don't recommend. It's not that good. But the backup by Ram V, the Justly Dark story, it's awesome as always. I do not know why DC is not making a main Justly Dark title. Ram V deserves it. He's made a backup story in all these issues that are just 10 pages. And usually stories like that are not as good because they're condensed down. But here, it works. Like, it's epic. We see Merlin try to take over Atlantis. And we see Aquaman and Atrigan team up. Also, Bobo, the detective chimp. And I'll say one thing. Atrigan in this issue gets an epic moment when he's like having all this fire coming out of his mouth. Taking down all these... Um, possessed Atlanteans, and super dope. Like, Etrigan is written so well here. Now, we also see Merlin versus Zatanna, and it's cool as well. And the ending of this issue where Merlin pretty much just messes up everything, and he gets out of the situation and causes Zatanna to become the Upside Down Man. Because as we know throughout the storyline, Zatanna has been trying to hold in the Upside Down Man. He can come out any moment. But Zatanna's been using her power, keeping him back. But here, Merlin tricks the Justly Dark and takes that power away. And the final image in this issue gets me so hyped because now the Upside Down Man has control of Zatanna's mind and body and he's gonna cause some chaos. So yeah, guys, good backup story. Artwork by Sir Michael, amazing as always. So yeah, guys, if you pick up this issue, Skip the main story, maybe like scan through it and like look and see if you're interested in anything. Get to the backup and enjoy it. Now for our final comic book for this week, we got Batman Reptilian number four. Written by Garth Ennis, art by Liam Sharp. I'm first going to address the artwork. Liam Sharp, usually his artwork is really phenomenal. Here it is still. There's still some really awesome images and overall it's really good. But there's also a couple images that I can't really see what's going on. Like, I know Liam Sharp does, like, this painted style where all the artwork and the textures, like, come together and blend. Which, that works a lot of the time. But here, there's a couple, like, double page spreads that I'm like, wait, what's going on? I'm confused. Like, I don't know what he's trying to draw here. And I have to really look into it and use context to get an understanding which is not good. Now, for the writing, there's not that much that happens in this issue. We see Batman, he finds Killer Croc, and we find out that the villain of this series, the person that's been, or not person, the monster that's been killing all these people, messing up all the villains in Batman's rogues, is actually an offspring of Killer Croc. Basically, Killer Croc had a child that's 10 times stronger than him, and it's just a beast. Now, the final image of this book is pretty dope. Like, that big monster is attacking Batman, Killer Croc. And now that everything has kind of been revealed, there's still some things to be revealed, but most of it has been just revealed in this issue. We get to some cool action, some good conclusion, and yeah, I'm excited. I'm a little skeptical, but I'm gonna hold out on it and hope it has like a good final two issues. So yeah, guys, that's going to wrap up the new comic books of this week, but it's time to get to the backhaul pull. For the backhaul pull for this week, I got for you guys Batman, Son of the Demon, uh, the graphic novel, written by Mike W. Barr and arts by Cherry Bingham. Now, guys, this comic is basically, if you think about, like, the first appearance of Damian Wayne, and I thought this would be the perfect issue to relate to, like, the new Robin issue, because in this comic, we see Batman team up with his rival, or one of his villains, Ra's al Ghul. Ra's al Ghul, Ra's al Ghul, doesn't matter, he's cool. Now, we got Ra's al Ghul, and he has a daughter, Salia, and Batman teams up with Ra's, and they try to take down a villain, but during the process, Batman falls in love, or, you know, bangs with Talia. They make a kid at the end that Batman doesn't know about. Usually, Batman plans for everything. He knows about everything. Here, he did not plan for it. Like, he was having some fun. He had a beloved 
It's Talia. Talia be calls him beloved in this whole comic. Like, we all know that. Like, that's what Talia calls Batman. But here we get a really cool adventure. A lot of good scenes. It's like one scene in the beginning of the comic where Batman takes down this guy. Like, this guy gets ass in his face. And the guy screams at Batman, God damn you. And Batman says back to him, hey, it looks like got to first. And I'm like, wow, that's good. Like, there's good dialogue in this issue that just makes you go like, mm-hmm, that, that's good. Like, I like that. Also, as the comic goes on, the arts fits the tone. It makes it really good. We get a lot of good sequences and a lot of good interactions between Batman, Ra's al Ghul, and Talia. And by the end of the graphic novel, we got Talia holding a child that will eventually be revealed as Damian Wayne. So this is the prelude to Damian. It's a good comic to pick up. It's very short, it's not that long. It's a good story, check it out. If you find this at your local comic shop, I would highly recommend you pick it up. Because not only are you getting like a setup for Damien, but you're just getting a fun Batman and Ra's al Ghul team up story. So why would you pass up on that? So yeah guys, that's going to be the back haul pool of this week. I do that every week where I take a comic for my physical copies and show you guys. But yeah, that's going to wrap up this video. Tell me your favorite new comic book down below. What do you think about the new Robin issue? What do you think about Deathstroke Inc? What do you think about the, all the fear state science? And what do you think about the final issue of Batman and Superman? Also, tell me your thoughts on Batman and Reptilian. I'm really interested to hear you guys' thoughts on that issue. But yeah, guys, for now, if you like the video, give a big thumbs up to the channel. Make sure to subscribe and the notification bell so you don't miss out on my next new comic book review video. And yeah, thanks for watching and peace out.